Let us build a house where love can dwell and all can safely live. A place where saints and children tell our hearts learn to forgive. Build on hopes and dreams and visions, rock of faith and world of grace. Hear the love of Christ shall. true if it's hey look at that i didn't even see you guys see some people sneak in from underneath or from the side while i'm like greeting outside the front door this side's a little thin over here what's going on about that yeah so who had a good day oh good that's quite a number that was a quick response anybody want to share some highlights no you really don't dave you're here that is a highlight kind of freaked me out yeah there you go there you go Actually, my wife and I entertained a college friend of mine. We have, we lost touch with each other up until about two years ago. It's been 17 years. Wow. And now we've reignited friendship. And it's just great. Right. Score. That's great. Awesome. Good news. Yes. Well, I went on a walk with my wife for two miles. That was great. The dog only went so many yards and said, I'm done. That was good, too, because then we could go at our own pace. All right. And then I played tennis with Sam, and I recognize I'm old. I cannot keep up with him. Yeah. But we do, we also, we lift up the family of uh, Warren Foyt. Mm -hmm. So I met with him today, just so it's on your radar. Um, his uh, celebration of life service will be at Shimon Funeral Home this Friday 
at noon. A little visitation beforehand, but the reviewal is really Thursday. So depending on how that works for you, if you know the family, a lot of you probably could be related to them, right? right. Yeah, maybe not Dennis and I, but yeah, okay. So just wanted to let you know on that. So again, our series during August. Does anybody tell me what the series is about? Church community. How about the promises we make at baptism? Yeah, and confirmation. Uh, it's almost ringing a bell. <laughs> so today, it's serving people like Jesus, okay? And um, I love that theme, and you are, you are faithful, so we're just going to go, yes, of course, of course. But it, it focuses us in on that. Let's um, stand as we're able. I'd like you to just wave to people. Um, it, you could stand and wave at the same time. And, and why I say that... Um, yeah, yeah. All right, beautiful song. How great is our God? The splendor of the King, clothed in majesty, and all the earth rejoice. God. 
Oh, Lord, you are so great. You are so awesome. You are the creator of all good things. And we are blessed. We are blessed to be here. We are blessed to have your breath of life in us. And so, Lord, we come to praise you, to honor you, to give you our best today. So thank you for gathering us here in Jesus' name. And, Lord, we also come to you as broken people. Things going on in our lives, losses, things that keep us down, that keep us from experiencing your fullness of joy, sins that we've committed, things that we have done and not done. So Lord, we ask you now to listen to your children praying as we talk to you in the silence of our hearts. Creator God, you are such a great God that you came to us as one of us, as Jesus the Christ, the Messiah, who took away the sins of the world. And so you proclaim to us, us sinners in need of a Savior, that we are saved by grace. And it's nothing we do, but it's what you've done for us by dying for our sins on the cross and by showing us the way, the truth, and the life, all in the power of Jesus' name in whom we pray. Amen. We'll continue with ancient words to prepare for the reading of the scripture. So again, I want to thank so many of you for being faithful here these weeks of August. Sometimes people are out and about and all that in August, but there are the few, the faithful, right? So it's, it's great. Um, so today we're centering on that phrase, serving all people like Jesus. All people means completely inclusive, that we are to be like the Good Samaritan, right? Helping someone who may not be our own, maybe not of our 
background, tribe, or nation. It's like a Norwegian helping a Swede, right? <laughs> or even one who we may despise. And so our scripture this day will place us in the scene of Jesus instructing his disciples to serve. As much as I like to read the scriptures, I like to see the scriptures enacted and kind of envision that scene and to see the facial expressions and hear the sounds and witness where people are at and coming from to see their Jesus, their rabbi, doing something extremely extraordinary because it's a scene that Jesus does the unthinkable. He washes his disciples' grungy street dirt feet, which is always the lowest servant's task, never the rabbi or leader's role. So let's enter this scene of the Gospel of John chapter 13 now. It was now the day before the Passover festival. Jesus knew that the hour had come for him to leave this world and go to the Father. He had always loved those in the world who were his own, and he loved them to the very end. Jesus and his disciples were at supper. The devil had already put into the heart of Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot, the thought of betraying Jesus. Jesus knew that the Father had given him complete power. He knew that he had come from God and was going to God. So he rose from the table, took off his outer garment, and tied a towel round his waist. Then he poured some water into a wash basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and dry them with the towel around his waist. He came to Simon Peter. Are you going to wash my feet, Lord? You do not understand now what I am doing, but you will understand later. Never at any time will you wash my feet. If I do not wash your feet, you will no longer be my disciple. Lord, do not wash only my feet then. Wash my hands and head too. <laughs> Those who have taken a bath are completely clean and do not need to wash themselves, except for their feet. All of you are clean. All except one. Jesus already knew who was going to betray him. That is why he said, all of you except one are clean. <sighs> After Jesus had washed their feet, he put his outer garment back on and returned to his place at the table. Do you understand what I've just done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and it is right that you should do so because that is what I am. I, your Lord and teacher, have just washed your feet. You then should wash one another's feet. I have set an example for you, so that you will do just what I have done for you. I am telling you the truth. 
No slaves are greater than their master, and no messengers are greater than the one who sent them. Now that you know this truth, how happy you will be if you put it into practice. Whose feet did Jesus wash? All of them, right? Everybody's feet, including... What would Judas do? Can't hear you really well. Thank you, thank you. That's what I thought. Could you do it? Could you wash someone's feet or serve someone you knew who was going to betray you? I don't know if I could, but then I have before. <laughs> it's true, I reflected on that, and I go, oh yeah, God, I have, yeah. Um, our council leader, Scott Segrist, right back there playing video games in the back, I never know what he's doing back there, but shared recently during our youth mission trip experience for a presentation that he'd never been on a service trip where you go help people in need. It was a big deal for him, a beginning with more moments to come. First, God gave a week of his year, a vacation week, to serve alongside our youth in a foreign land, Minnesota. <laughs> he drove a massive van bus. This thing was huge. He'd never done that before. And he gave his life to serve. He and several others clean the entire lot of Roy's house, if you remember that. There were 12 truckloads of stuff to go to the dump. Did you hear that? 12 truckloads. You got a big truck, so imagine all those, okay? That's serious service, especially as Roy is really in his last days of life. Roy is of the Ojibwe nation, Leech Lake tribe. For Scott and all of us, he was of a different tribe or nation, if you will. So what? He was a brother, a brother in Christ, that because of his limiting health, could not care for his yard. So we washed his feet. We cleaned off his junk. And it mattered. And we did so in Jesus' name. What I appreciated about the John 13 video is that it showed how stunned the disciples were, including the women followers who were with Jesus as Jesus washed their feet. It was not expected, right? Totally a surprise. But what a teaching moment. Again, Jesus is reinforcing that we will be given opportunities to serve people that we may not choose and would rather walk on by like the priest or a Levite. But rather to serve like Jesus is to take the basin and the towel to get down on our knees and wash other people's dirty feet, taking care of people's needs, whatever it takes. Why? Because that's what Jesus, our rabbi teacher, would do. Why? Because that's what the Good Samaritan would do. So I met the family of um, Warren Foytz today. Never met them before in my life. Shook hands with each of them. Delightful family. And they had so many good words to say about Warren. Kind, com compassionate, generous, caring. He had so many contacts on speed dial on his phone. He was always talking on the phone. But he was generous. That's what they really stressed. He was generous. He helped anybody who had need. If he saw somebody in need and just had a 20 in his wallet, go, you need this more than I do. Okay? He would find out that brownberry, you know, had bread, and if it gets a day old, then they throw it out. He would get the whole truckload and start bringing it and delivering it to people. Go, hey, you want some corn with that too? You know that sweet corn? That's so cool. And that's serving like Jesus. Have you ever just showed up and helped someone when not expected? It's a pretty powerful thing. Delivering soup and bread over 13 months was really fun because there were several households in which we would simply drop by and deliver. We didn't give them a heads up. 
We did with you, Mary. Yeah, 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 but you know some others. But there was um, and all the smiles on their faces, and the delight in receiving such a blessing, it filled their cup with joy. The early church did this too. Daily they broke bread together in their homes and winning the favor of all the people. They gave to any who had need. And what I love about us, that is St. Olaf, is that we are willing to go the extra mile, the extra steps to help those in need. Though this is a growing edge for many of us, our vision in 2022, and this you'll hear more about our, our fall um, giving campaign, is God's work, our hands, partnering together to serve our community. We will be mobilized to serve our community big time. That's what we're really looking at in 2022. Not that we haven't been doing that before, but we want to concentrate even more and to serve people like Jesus. Now, many people in the countryside fear going into the city. Some rarely ever or never go downtown, let alone to neighborhoods that may be in some disrepair. I felt some of this disparity this last Sunday as I went to Cedar Rapids, Iowa for my colleague's 50th wedding anniversary. The derecho winds of 100 to 140 miles per hour went on for 40 minutes and devastated 65% of the city's tree canopy. Grass bat, it looked rough. And having been through a severe flood in 2008 when I was there, the city is still under great repair. Yes, many are still not back in their homes after this high wind episode. And so as I drew, drove through more of the difficult parts of town, my heart beat with a bit more compassion. Just the broken trees, the apartments and homes in disrepair made me realize that some people's lives were made more than inconvenient. It put some people in really serious, dire straits. Yet as I heard, many of the local churches of these neighborhoods served these people like Jesus. They helped clean up, they repair, assist in any way, just like the early church did by selling their possessions and giving to any who had need. Now many in the city of Milwaukee live day to day. That's your cue, thanks not knowing how life may be. And there's not much stability and sometimes little hope. But St. Olaf brings a little hope and blessing by offering our abundance of good fruit and veggies to bless people in such a food desert as Milwaukee. This is serving people like Jesus. It doesn't matter who they are, where they are from, or what their circumstances are in life. We bless and serve everyone as they have need. The need is healthy food. That is something we do well in the countryside as we have good gardens and farms. In some ways, this is easy and yet substantial. So I give a great cheer for all of you who are plot partners. For me, it's easy to minister to friends, people that I do life together with, um, and some for as long as eight years when I was in Cedar Rapids. So 13 years later, I was able to be there for these dear friends, Pastor Dan and Nova, who again celebrated 50 years of marriage on Sunday. They were amazed that I showed up. It's only three and a half hours away. That's doable, right? Yet more than their celebration, I was there to comfort them. As their son, who had battled alcoholism for years, young man, um, died through that alcohol addiction just this past year. Also, as I was there via Facebook, um, I, I connected with my dear friend Carolyn. She lost her husband about a year ago, Steve. And so I set up dinner with her at my favorite restaurant there, Biagi's. And she's a widow. And her husband, Steve, was my golf buddy. You can barely see them in the corner of that bench there. But... Um, he, he died um, with mental illness at the end. It was pretty um, grievous. And, um, and as I met with Carolyn, you know, I asked her how she was doing. And she said, okay, okay. And then she, you know, and then we started looking at what we were going to eat. And then eventually it all, it all came out. 
She just needed someone to listen. And she knew I knew Steve that well. And it was powerful because it's easy. She's a friend, dear friend, and to be there for her, but it mattered. It mattered to be there in that moment. That's why I'm learning more and more how I appreciate funerals because they gather people together and it's a powerful way of doing great ministry even when I don't know people. So to be there today to meet this beloved family of Warren Foyts and to see their comfort and their encouragement just by my listening, as simple as that is, taking notes, asking good questions, all that matters. And that's also how we serve like Jesus. So Jesus is pouring the water in the basin for you and me. Okay? So here we carry it. Now I invite you to join with me this week by asking the same question every single day of the week. Whose feet is God calling me to wash today? Or simpler, who is Jesus asking me to serve today? Let's pray. Lord, your example is amazing. And though it shocked the disciples and maybe they didn't get it at first, as Jesus said, Eventually they pondered, what does it look like to do even the lowest of things to serve anybody, anybody? So Lord, may your Holy Spirit work in us today for the days to come that we may serve like you, Jesus. In whose name we pray, amen. Okay. Again, you're always welcome to remain seated, but we're going to do a hymn, number 722. And I know you guys like to sing hymns, but then I, I, I uh, led this with uh, Steve just a moment ago. He's going, never heard that one before. So you're going to want to open your, uh, your pew um, hymnal. Marilyn's all set. She's going to lead us. Okay. You may stand like Paul is doing as a good boy, um, but you don't have to stand. And so feel free um, to join along as you pick up on it. The great lyrics. Oh Christ, your heart compassionate for every human pain. It's beating was the pulse of God. It's breath God's vast domain, the heart of God, the heart of Christ, combined in perfect prime to write God's love in human deeds, eternity in time. As once you welcome those cast down and heal the sick. Oh, it was. 
as my mysterious assisting minister comes forward, which I don't know which one it is, I am going to lead us in a time of prayer for our offerings. Lord, thank you for the generosity of this congregation, that we have been blessed by what you have given us, and that we give those first fruits back to you, that they may honor you, and that they may do great ministry within our church, and that they would expand your mission into the world. We give you thanks for all these gifts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's join in confessing our faith with the Apostles' Creed. I believe, believe in, in God, God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, He rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. With our family of believers around the globe, we join in prayer, praying for the church, the world, and all in need. Summer break is drawing to a close. Many children are returning to school for the fall. Lord, let this be a safe, healthy, productive school year. Kids eager to learn and to be with friends. Bring normalcy to the classroom where we have seen a rough couple of years. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Lord, show compassion on the situation in Afghanistan. Aid the U.S. citizens and Afghan refugees in their exit of the country. Help the refugees to find safety and welcome in the U.S. and in other countries around the globe. Bring order where there is chaos. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Let us see opportunity, Lord, to serve others. Help us to seize the moment when another is in need. You set up many divine appointments in our lives and call us to act. Many times a small gesture makes all the difference in the world. Help us to show your love to all people, to follow your example in all that we do. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for these friends and family of our congregation, the family of Warren, Warren Foytes, David D., Jamie, Jamie Christensen, Christensen, Jeff Daly, Daly Mark T., Mike, Mike N., N., Linda, Linda Frederick, and Kathy L., and for those serving in the military around the globe and those who have returned home. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. There are free countries taking extreme measures to fight COVID. Lord, bring common sense to their leaders, weighing the effects of the virus against the effects of their heavy-handed approach, seeing that the latter is more damaging to their society. Calm the hysteria so that COVID can be treated as other illnesses are. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we lay these prayers before you, knowing that you are in control, trusting in your mercy and grace. In your Son, Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So it was that Thursday night in which Jesus did wash the disciples' feet. The table was all spread out with good good food for the Passover feast. And um, Jesus took the common bread and the wine. Um, again, was the bread a, a, a good, full, thick loaf? No, it was flat. It was made in haste, right? And so, but we get a good loaf, right? But anyways, Jesus took bread, broke it, and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Following supper, he took a cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink. Yep, even Judas, saying, This is my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us join in the prayer he taught his disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. 
and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. As you know, all are welcome. Please come to the table. body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. So speaking about plot partners, what do you know, Steve? <laughs> well, I want to thank everybody that made that program and make, continues to make that program uh, an excellent program. It started out as just a seed of an idea, and you all made it blossom. Hey, let's so, give Steve a hand, huh? Thank you very much. Woo! We have a little video. Um, it is a food desert area. There are very limited options around here. Um, we try and plant seeds, not just of tomatoes and zucchinis, but also plant seeds of hope and peace in our neighborhood. As I learned more about all the work being done at All Peoples, I heard about their garden. They were telling me about a, a plot partner program where they had members of the church extend that garden into their homes and, and grow vegetables. A light bulb came on and then I said, uh, well, one thing that we have out by St. Olaf Church is farmers and land. It mushroomed into a big program, really. There's at least 12 families now that support the program. Some of the farmers actually plant crops specifically for Outreach for Hope. And uh, 
we've had teams from uh, All Peoples come out and pick sweet corn and uh, joining forces with All Peoples. It's been a great program. Everybody's enjoyed it. We really seek to have an interactive partnership with our other churches in our neighborhood, not just do for. And Steve and, and his church, that was just delightful because it's all this produce coming in and a huge factor is produce we can't grow with. Peppers, we grow very few peppers here. We're just not consistently warm enough. Larger crops like pumpkins, corn, we can't grow here. So with that layering in, that we're all in this together. Well, we've been asking for it hey, on and off for the years. They the best. They fed my family last week. They the best. You look familiar. Anything else you want to add? No, just thanks Keep on. for making it work. Yeah. I like that word mushroomed. That's great. Anything else going on? So we've got in a few weeks, um, we'll have a special 911 service. On what date? September 11th, yes. And that'll be on, a, on the Saturday. And then on Sunday, we intend to have an outdoor service. Um, and then our, our children will be here for vacation Bible school that day. So there'll be a lot going on. Hope, you know, if you can go to both, that's great. Anything else that we need to share? Nobody else standing up want to say something? You know, George and Elaine are controlling themselves and Dave wants to ring the bell. Okay, go ahead. That's your cue. Stand if you would like. Love this hymn. Love this hymn. I thank God for Bernadette Farrell who uh, wrote this uh, Christ be our light. Looking for light, we wait in darkness. Longing for truth, we turn to you. Make us your own, your holy people. Light for the world.
go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Cry.